What companies deserve your hard-earned dollar? Which would you want to work for? How can you know if they share your values? Just ask us. Just Capital is a nonprofit that tracks who really means business in supporting workers, customers, communities, the environment, and shareholders. We measure progress, track success, and help them be better. When you see the Just Capital seal, you know what's real because just business is better business. Visit justcapital.com to learn who makes your dollar count. And good evening. Happy New Year. We're doing it live right here weeknights in the 5 o'clock hour. Motec on Money, five nights a week for you. Live on the air here in 790. KBC streaming live online worldwide at kbc.com. And your on-demand Motec on Money podcast at kbc.com. Apple iTunes, all your favorite podcast platforms. Stocks moving mostly lower today. Rough start to 2024 after that big rally. We saw to finish off uh, 2023 with the NASDAQ booking its fifth straight session of losses. The S&P 500 down for the fourth day in a row on the latest news on the economy and also uh, concerns about the Fed's next move in 2024. The S&P 500 slipping 16 points today. The Dow moving lower by 10. The NASDAQ moving down by another 82 points. We've seen quite a tech sell-off lately with Apple shares taking a hit. In fact, Apple down another $2 today at 181 and change. Stocks have been off to a rocky start in the new year, although we did a new hit a new high for the Dow on the first trading day of the year. The Dow eked out a modest gain uh, stemming from losses from earlier this week. But the uh, Nasdaq still ending in the red, locking its longest losing streak in more than a year. The Dow was actually up 10 points today at 37,440. AMC Holdings, one of the meme stocks, hitting a new record low today, ending the session at $5.30, falling another 5%. AMC now um, seeing a four-day losing streak, the longest since a five-day streak that ended in November of last year. Price of oil moving a bit lower today, down 51 cents at 72.19 a barrel. This despite the tensions in the Red Sea and the Middle East as Israel presses the war on the terror group Hamas, the price of oil moving lower today on a report that showed a sharp weekly gain in oil product supplies, raising concerns about fuel demand, according to the Energy Information Administration. New laws have kicked in impacting businesses here in Los Angeles as well as throughout the state. I'll talk about that tonight with Mark Wilbur, former chairman and founding member of the Los Angeles Business Federation, L.A. BizFed, former associate dean of the USC Marshall School of Business, longtime president and CEO of Employers Group here in Los Angeles. What's the latest on apartment rents here in L.A.? What's the outlook for 2024? Are rents going up or are they coming down? We'll get an update on the rents tonight from Michael Lucarelli, the CEO of RentSpree, the rental management software provider based right here in Los Angeles. But first, on your money, the markets, the economy, and the whole work setting into 2024. Joining us live now, Gabriel Wisdom, for our first conversation in the new year, managing director and co-founder of American Money Management and author of Wisdom on Value Investing. Happy New Year, Gabriel Wisdom, and thank you for being a longtime uh, contributor to this program over many, many years. And we look, uh, we're look we looking for more in 24 here from you, uh, Gabriel. Thank you so much for taking the call here tonight. My pleasure, Frank, and Happy New Year to you. And Everybody in the KABC audience, uh, a very great honor and a pleasure to be with you. Wonderful to have you with us, uh, Gabriel Wisdom. Uh, take it from the top and uh, give us your assessment here. A rough start uh, to the new year uh, on Wall Street. Concerns certainly uh, on Main Street and around the world. Uh, give us your thoughts here as we uh, head into uh, 2024. Well, you know, Frank, look, when you consider all that's happened since this decade began, uh, th this time, this you know, January four years ago, uh, we've got a roaring 2020s uh, scenario, but it's been riddled with uh, uncertainty and, and danger, actually. Uh, Russia invades the Ukraine, inflation soared. Of course, we had COVID and then COVID-2 in 2021. Uh, we, we had the, the, the capital insurrection uh, in, uh, January 6th, three years ago. I mean, it's been a, a, a really rocky time, and yet... During those four very volatile, very dangerous uh, years in this decade, the S&P 500, the broad stock market, advanced over 47 percent, 47.6 percent from the end of 2019 through the very end of uh, 2023. So it tells you that markets tend to increase over time. Uh, now, they're volatile, but the fact remains that there are some 75 million 
new net births in the world in 2023. That's about 208,000 people net net born every single day on this planet. And they want they want to buy all the things that we all want. So it drives the markets. On the air live with Gabriel Wisdom with American Money Management. Thank you for that uh, assessment here, uh, Gabriel Wisdom. As we uh, head into uh, 2024, and and you're right. Uh, just th- thank you for rattling all that off because uh, it's been quite a quite a, a decade here uh, so far. And uh, fasten your seatbelts uh, for this year, certainly with uh, certainly a lot of political uncertainty and geopolitical uh, uncertainty. Uh, I know you're also a, a market historian. How does the market normally hold up uh, in an election year? Well, we've got a presidential election year cycle that has been uh, a pretty decent predictor. And it's, it's because the incumbent party wants to stay in power. So, uh, if, if it's the Democrats, if it's the Republicans, it's the incumbents. Uh, and uh, it, what they do is pull out all the stops to have a strong year for the economy, for business, and uh, with, with lower interest rates. Now, whether the Federal Reserve will... Uh, play along. The timing seems to be pretty good. Interest rates uh, have uh, every reason to fall at least slightly. We saw the monthly job openings uh, hit the lowest level since March of 2021. I mean that that's the that's got to tell that's got to send a signal to the Federal Reserve to reduce interest rates. The price of oil is much lower than it was at the beginning of uh, 2023. Uh, that's got to be a net positive as well for travel and so forth. So I, I, I think it, it, it's shaping up to be a pretty decent year. All right. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Certainly a lot of nervousness uh, watching what's happening around the world and how uh, the U.S. Uh, locking horns with the, the Houthis, um, Iranian the supported group, uh, an armed unmanned service vessel launched from a Houthi controlled Yemen, got within a couple of miles of the U.S. Navy uh, and commercial vessels in the Red Sea before detonating today. We're watching developments there, uh, attacks by Iran backed Houthi rebels on the vessels in the Red Sea, leading to uh, cargo disruptions uh, for oil and other products. We are nervously watching what's happening uh, with the oil markets and. Uh, we did see uh, oil move slightly lower on that inventory report. Uh, what about uh, all of this uh, happening uh, around the world? Uh, certainly the potential for uh, for a geopolitical event uh, very much um, alive at this point, which would uh, rattle the uh, the markets. Uh, Gabriel, what are your thoughts here uh, heading into the new year? You know, there's no question, Frank, that the Gaza war seems to be turning into a, a regional war. The latest incident, which you just cited, is very unsettling. Uh, and uh, uh, so far, the conflict, the rising tensions in the Middle East have had no impact whatsoever on oil or natural gas. And it's because we've got additional capacity, more production. So that's all good. But when you hear these stories, they always come with a prediction of something that's going to happen. Nobody can predict the future. I mean, we've, we've seen that over the last four years of this new decade. Every new story typically comes with a prediction. We all do it because we're logical. Uh, Michael Crichton, the, the, the late uh, author, often complained that politicians and journalists would uh, opine on scientific matters. He was a scientist, physician, uh, and they do so without having any actual understanding of either the facts or the issues. He he say the forecasts were so wrong uh, so often that they actually presented the story backwards, reversing cause and effect, what Crichton called wet streets cause rain stories. <laughs> so uh, the same things happen in the financial uh, markets. Uh, I mean, I am concerned about a spreading war in the Middle East, but so far it hasn't had much effect on uh, the markets. And this year is starting uh, like it did last year with predictions that we're going to get a recession uh, this year. That did not happen last year, at least not uh, officially, although a lot of people uh, felt uh, it was a, a recession or even worse. So what about uh, the economy heading into uh, the new year? I, I think it's going to be a, a nice soft landing. It might be the first of my 35-year career uh, on Wall Street. Uh, every, every Fed adjustment has uh, been a hard landing. Some have been crash landings. And, you know, the, the Federal Reserve, though, only uh, cuts rates aggressively during a recession. We don't have a recession. So uh, my, my thinking is that 
and the market uh, anticipated, you know, they reacted to it today, that rates won't come down anytime soon where they come down very, very gradually, but they won't go back to the old lows. And I think that's net positive for anybody that saves money and expects to get interest on their savings. All right. What about uh, inflation, which was the big story uh, the last year and a half or so? Um, what about uh, on the inflation front? Uh, has it finally been tamed? It's still higher than where the Fed wants it at this point. It is higher than where the Fed wants it. And that's another reason why the interest rate a policy would probably uh, be difficult to, to change very quickly. Um, one positive for inflation is this move to automation. Uh, you know, over the next decade, the U.S. Census Bureau is now projecting the U.S. population will expand by 7.5% to 355 million people. But the age 16 to 64 population will rise by only 1.2%. And what this implies is a labor shortfall, a short, a shortage of workers, a dramatic shortage of workers, especially when you include the, uh, the 63% participation rate in the labor force. So businesses are investing their capital in automation to offset this labor shortfall. So that's, that's very good news for inflation because automation is cheaper and it more, creates more production. Uh, and, and I think that uh, inflation will probably be at the Fed's target of uh, 3% or so by this time uh, in December. All right. Officially, the inflation number seems to be coming down, but certainly anecdotally, uh, talking to business people, uh, we're still uh, hurting with inflation. Certainly, um, rents are still high, and we're seeing uh, insurance rates uh, skyrocket, right? So uh, among the movers and shakers you talk to, Gabriel, uh, what is the gut feeling uh, on real uh, inflation out there? Well, the real cost, the real inflation has always been higher than what the federal government reports because uh, they tinker with the numbers. And it has to do with uh, the debt service that we have as a nation. And, and, and also, they want the, the consumer rates to be low to stoke the economy. But uh, the real cost. The NFL playoffs are almost here. And it all starts with Super Wild Card Weekend, presented by Verizon. Give me everything you got. 12 teams, six games, three days, and one epic weekend that kicks off with a Saturday doubleheader, followed by a Sunday tripleheader. And ends with a wild card Monday. Unbelievable. The road to Super Bowl 58 starts January 13th. We're all juggling life, a career, and trying to build a little bit of wealth. The Brown Ambition Podcast with host Mandy and Tiffany the Budget Nista can help. When it comes to financial stuff, gather friends, confidants as you go along who are on the same path as you because family is amazing, but family doesn't always understand the journey that we're on because they have their separate journeys. So I just feel like the more voices you have, whether it's ours from listening to the podcast, we can be like your big sister friends. Brown Ambition, wherever you listen of living has gone up quite dramatically and i'm not sure if it has anything to do with this uh these these uh trends in workplace they you know the uh gen z is uh, is a rapidly growing generation that's uh taking over a lot of the uh, baby boom jobs there's the generative uh, ai movement uh, there's the new remote uh, uh, hybrid working conditions but companies are finding in all of this that they can raise prices 15, 20 percent and people still buy. Even though the actual rate of inflation is far lower, they're getting away with these these price increases. And the, the insurance industry is a bit of a oligopoly. It's not a monopoly. It's not a duopoly, but they they do fix prices quite routinely. All right. Let's talk about uh, gold, uh, which uh, hit a high uh, record high as the uh, as 2023 uh, closed out. Uh, right now, it's hovering uh, still above 2000 here at 2052. And it, it was curious to see gold rally just as uh, those official inflation numbers uh, were coming down. Uh, uh, so what about uh, what about gold? And for that matter, what about uh, crypto here, which uh, had a, has been on the rebound lately? <laughs> well, I'll start with gold, Frank. Uh, uh, gold demand is, is known to rise in the summer during the Indian wedding and festival seasons. India is one of the largest gold-consuming countries 
in the world. And for gold to be acting pretty well it, this time of the year uh, tells me that it will be a, a pretty decent year for, for gold. There is a commodity uh, seasonal rhythm. With regard to uh, Bitcoin, uh, we're supposed to find out perhaps uh, this time next week whether the Securities and Exchange Commission will approve uh, BlackRock's uh, uh, exchange-traded fund of, uh, of Bitcoin, and Goldman Sachs wants to get in the act. Uh, every Wall Street firm actually will, would like to be in the middle of any transaction where there's a lot of volume. Uh, and, 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 you know, crypto has gained a lot of, well, momentum certainly in 2023 uh, in El Salvador, where Bitcoin is the official currency of that little nation. Uh, Bitcoin education will be compulsory in Salvador's public schools starting now, starting 2024. Uh, and uh, so, I, I mean, I don't discount the value of crypto. I'm just not yet ready to use it as a currency. All right. Well, we'll continue to follow the, the gold chains uh, as well as the blockchains here, certainly uh, on this program. And we talk to the, the biggest fans of crypto as well as the harshest critics. Of course, crypto has been on the rebound lately. So uh, it's become uh, more of the um, cocktail party uh, conversation. Once again, it certainly was uh, over this holiday season. At this point, uh, Gabriel Wisdom, let me ask you the, the question we've been asking you uh, for decades here. Where are you putting money now and or taking it off the table? Well, Frank, you know, I'm a value investor. I, I still like the so-called Magnificent uh, Seven or the Mega Cap uh, Eight or whatever you want to call them. But, and, and everybody knows these names by now. There's uh, Meta or Facebook and Tesla. Uh, there's Amazon, Netflix, uh, Google or Alphabet, uh, Microsoft and Apple. You, you know, the, the, at least half of those stocks, uh, some it's exactly half, are just hitting the old highs of 2021. I mean, they, they really haven't performed that magnificently over a three-year period. Of course, this was a phenomenal year. Uh, 2023 was, was great for the MAG-7, but some of the best performing stocks were the worst performers in 2022. So I'm looking at a worst to first uh, phenomena once again. I, uh, I like uh, Walgreens, which uh, cut its dividend today. And the stock sagged. It's even cheaper. Walgreens, WBA, I'm looking at. Chevron uh, was down quite a bit last year. Uh, CBX, Johnson & Johnson, uh, down about 12%. Uh, JNJ, uh, 3M, uh, triple M is a symbol, uh, down 12%. I, I think these are worth looking at. And then I mentioned oil prices and, uh, and de declining interest rates possibly for uh, 2024. I'd say travel, the travel uh, names uh, look very, very cheap now. The airlines, I'd, buy, I'd probably buy them all in an exchange-traded fund, and, and uh, as well as uh, maybe Carnival, Norwegian Cruise Lines, uh, and uh, some of the traveled names. Very interesting. I noted uh, Carnival was one of the big movers on the upside today, up more than 3%, and they also uh, were very present uh, on the New Year's Eve in New York, uh, sponsoring the, the ball drop there. So that was uh, interesting to see uh, as the cruise lines have uh, bounced back from the, the pandemic uh, with strong numbers. And and um, and uh, let me ask you, there was something else uh, I wanted to ask you. Uh, you know, the, the bond market rebounded uh, for those with bond funds uh, who, who hung in there, uh, rebounded late last year, right? Uh, and that 60-40 uh, portfolio for those who had a stomach for it uh, apparently worked out uh, pretty well uh, this year, right? Uh, for anyone thinking about making any adjustments to their uh, 401ks and all that with the, the mix of uh, stocks and bonds, uh, any uh, guidance there before we let you off the hook? Well, you know, Frank, I always like to uh, do the cocktail napkin equation uh, as a starter. You, you take the number 100, just in case you live to be 100, you don't want to run out of money. So you take uh, the number 100 and deduct your present age. So if your present age is 50, uh, then 50% would be in the broad stock market. 50% would be in bonds. Uh, pr I'd probably go shorter than longer. Uh, in fact, I know I'd be shorter than longer. I, I, I'm not comfortable going out more than six years right now. And in fact, if you go out one year with treasuries, you can still get about 5% state tax-free, and then you've got the stock market exposure. Uh, every time Janet Yellen uh, ex makes a speech, I've noticed the bond market market rallies because she's very dovish on rates. So uh, we'll, we'll see what she has to say next. 
but I'd wait for the bond market to sell off a bit and then add to any fixed income positions. All right, terrific, Gabriel. Well, thank you very much uh, for joining us here. First week of 2024 on the Wall Street and Main Street. Thank you very much, uh, Gabriel Wisdom, for joining us live here tonight. Thank you, Frank. Gabriel Wisdom, Managing Director and Co-Founder of American Money Management and author of Wisdom on Value Investing, live with us here tonight on Motac on Money on 790 KBC. Happy New Year. It's time to start the new year off right with reminders from our friends, Attorney Clark Fielding of Fielding Law. Now, if you've been hurt in an accident that was not your fault, it's easy to feel lost in the sea of legal complexities. Fear not. Clark and his team of law sharks are here to navigate the legal waters for you. They have the expertise to tackle any case, big or small. Fielding Law is not just about providing legal advice. They're also about making sure you understand every step of the process. So consider them your partners in justice. Whether you're facing a sea of paperwork, swimming in contractual confusion, or caught in a legal undertow, Clark the Shark is the lifeguard you need. The Fielding Law team dedicated to protecting your rights and ensuring a smooth journey through the legal currents. So as you dive into the new year, remember Fielding Law always has your back. They're not just lawyers. They're your fantastic friends in the legal world. Call them now, 833-88-SHARK, 833-88-SHARK. Or go to ClarkTheSharkLaw.com. Again, that's ClarkTheSharkLaw.com. Dow did eke out a closing gain today of 10 points. Kind of a head-spinning day with uh, the Dow up 10 at the close at 37,440. The S&P 500 down 16 at 4,689. And the NASDAQ down 82 points at 14,510. The NASDAQ composite... Still ended in the red, logging its longest losing streak in more than a year after briefly turning positive early today in the early going. The Dow eked out a modest gain today, and uh, the S&P 500 did close lower by 16. Heightened Middle East tensions, concerns that stocks and bonds have become overbought, and concerns that the Fed might not reduce borrowing costs as quickly as earlier hoped have all been blamed for uh, driving the sell-off as we headed into the new year. The yield in the 10-year note is back up to just about 4% now. Bitcoin, pretty much on the flat line now at 42,782 off its a recent high. Ethereum down 9 at 2,265. Doge at the moment at 8 cents. Apple down another $2.34 today at 181 and change. The price of oil right now hovering uh, just below $73 a barrel. Gold at the moment of $4.50 at 2,054.40. Motega Money continues here on 790 KBC. Happy New Year. What's the mood out there among L.A. business leaders? As we head into the new year, new laws have kicked in impacting businesses here in Los Angeles as well as throughout the state. Let's bring in Mark Wilbur now, former chairman and founding member of the Los Angeles Business Federation, L.A. BizFed, the voice of business here in Los Angeles County, former associate dean of the USC Marshall School of Business, longtime president and CEO of Employers Group. Happy New Year, Mark Wilbur. Happy New Year, Frank. Great to be on your show. Wonderful to have you with us here, Mark. Thank you very, very much. And uh, again, thank you for all of the uh, great conversations we've had over many, many years now. And here we are, a happy new year, 2024. Uh, give us an update on the uh, the mood out there among the uh, movers and shakers you interact with there uh, at the Los Angeles Business Federation. Well, you know, I mean, we keep getting uh, Biden economics uh, shoved down our throat, but, you know, that isn't proving to be very helpful in, in most corners. Uh, you know, the a lot of the things that are kicking in right now are all these minimum wage increases. So, you know, you've got the state increase to $16. Uh, and then you've got the, of course, the, the fast food uh, council, you know, all the fast food workers go up to 20 healthcare moves up to 25. So these are like some of the impacts that again, um, add to the inflation numbers in the state, uh, you know, because when wages go up, somebody's got to pay for it and that'll end up being the consumer at the end of the day. So uh, those are some of the ones just right off the top of my head. Um, there are a couple of others. If I could just bring them up real quick, Frank, Certainly. one that I thought was very interesting and might help, uh, might help in some of the um, homelessness and the housing situation. Uh, I, it was one of these ones. So it was kind of quiet. Nobody really talked about much. It's called AB 12. And it capped the amount of deposit renters are required to pay at one month. You know, you, you hear stories that people ask for, you know, if it's furnished, it could be three months of deposit. It could be two months of deposit. You know, there's it's kind of a catch as catch can out there, depending on the marketplace. 
but in this case, it's going to cap it at one month, which I think is uh, is probably at least a decent move. I'd like to see the, the state do some other things to help uh, people get into rental units. I think there's some things that they could do, um, but probably not enough time uh, for today's show. Right. Certainly landlords probably not too thrilled uh, with that new law, right? Yeah. No, landlords is probably not too happy with that one. But honestly, it's like one of those things where um, every once in a while you look at uh, certain situations that come up and you're like, you know what, this one makes sense. I mean, I, you know, oftentimes you landlords have used that to basically keep uh, people out uh, in many respects and mandate that only a certain level of person can get in. Uh, which is really tough when you've you know, got a family and you're trying to you know, stay on your feet and try and avoid being homeless. So it's, um, it's one of those ones that I obviously have mixed emotions about from a business leader standpoint. It, it's obviously harder on the, uh, on the landlord, but at the same problem, at the same time, you and I sit here and look at this homelessness situation, increased crime, increased situations of violence uh, in the homeless areas. And it's, uh, we need to do something to get it fixed. And we don't seem to have a plan in place certainly. at all at this point. Certainly. And getting back to the first thing you mentioned, uh, the minimum wage increase for fast work, fast food workers of $20 an hour starting in April. And also um, uh, yeah. we see a minimum wage uh, for health care workers, 2 to 23 hours, uh, $23 an hour by, by June of this year. Uh, already we're seeing uh, some restaurants uh, throwing the towel here just as, as this year begins or seeing the robots uh, coming to the table now. Uh, we also see those um, those robotic uh, delivery things out there, those little carts uh, with little uh, headlights on them uh, going through the streets of West Hollywood. I noticed uh, yeah. just uh, the other day again. That- the NFL playoffs are almost here, and it all starts with Super Wild Card Weekend, presented by Verizon. Give me everything you got! 12 teams, 6 games, 3 days, and one epic weekend that kicks off with a Saturday doubleheader, followed by a Sunday tripleheader, and ends with a wild card Monday. Unbelievable! The road to Super Bowl 58 starts January 13th. Business has always been about turning a profit, making money. But can it stand for something more? Something beyond dollars and cents? We think so. We think that today, business has a higher calling, a purpose, to be fair and just, to do right by their workers, customers, communities, and the environment. And it turns out companies successful doing that also do better for their bottom line. When you see the Just Capital seal, it means this company is a force for good. Visit JustCapital.com to learn more. And uh, businesses are certainly doing what they have to do to control uh, labor costs at this point. Yeah, absolutely. You know, West Hollywood, I think, actually has the highest uh, minimum wage in the state. I think a in the country, actually. $19 an hour. I think that's the right? highest in America. Yeah. So, you know, and, and if you remember a couple of years ago, you and I were talking about this issue. It was, we were just coming out of COVID and there was a lot of minimum wage things going on. And I said, you know what's going to impact this? Fast food companies are going to start doing robotics and they're going to start trying to eliminate staff in order to stay in business. And that is coming full truth to, to you and I uh, two years later, because I, I knew that was going to happen because, you know, somebody has to pay for it and you can't have a dollar meal or a dollar fifty meal uh, and, you know, continually raise prices on these uh, on the operations. So, you know, it has to get picked up somewhere. Right. Here's something that happened over the holiday season when uh, a lot of people weren't tuned into the news. A Pizza Hut laid off uh, 1,200 delivery drivers here in California ahead of the uh, minimum wage increase. Yeah, and look at look at one of our favorites. I mean, for anybody in the West L.A., Sweet Lady Jane shut down on the 31st to avoid going into 2024 with the minimum wage. That's an excellent point. And uh, we see the IHOP, the iconic IHOP in West Hollywood also closing as the new year began. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're going to see, you know, a continued numbers of people fleeing the state. We're going to see continued situations like recently the Kia car that was weaponized to ram into the bakery, you know, the whole street takeovers. And I, you know, at what point are the politicians going to get out in front of this and say enough is enough? I just, I don't, they're just not doing anything. And uh, 
somehow I'm sure it's your fault and my fault that, you know, these things are happening. But, you know, the truth is, you know, when you just let things go rampant and you don't get control of it, uh, it's going to be hard to get that genie back in the bottle. And certainly your uh, last business pulse uh, survey, which uh, Tracy Hernandez, the president of BizFed, uh, shared with us. Uh, remember, homelessness and crime certainly uh, at or near the very top of uh, the list of uh, business concerns. Uh, and, of course, uh, making L.A. more business-friendly has been an uphill fight. Um, as we get into uh, the new year, uh, what are some of the uh, the BizFed uh, priorities and uh, and uh, where, um, where are business leaders uh, most focused at this point? Well, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that, Frank, because I was on a call today with BizFed, uh, kind of an emergency call to join – um, join forces with uh, Cal Chamber and, and others to fight this whole reporting issue from CARB, um, which is, you know, the, the state air quality. And it is, it's so out of control in the regulations. Again, this is going to cause business to say enough is enough. I'm going to, I'm going to take my business to Arizona. I'm taking it to Nevada or Utah. I'm out of here. And so uh, you're going to see a lot of activity in that CARB situation uh, coming up over the next uh, four to six months, and I'll keep you updated on that. That is very important. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, but certainly uh, on the issue of crime and homelessness, uh, and we heard uh, Tom Looney's report here on uh, 790 KBC about the uh, crime rate being much higher here in L.A. compared to other places and and businesses yeah. wrestling uh, with that. Uh, smash and grabs obviously still in the news. Um, more One shocking video after another, and um, restaurants and other businesses wrestling uh, with the homeless and so forth. Um, obviously big issues this year. Yeah, it's really big issues. I mean, the mayor uh, has got to get out in front of this. I mean, we got to stop talking about it, and there needs to be some action taken. She talked a big game, you know, that she was going to get out in front of this and, uh, you know, won the vote. And we're still sitting in the same spot, if not worse, than we were uh, when she took over. So she's really got to get active. She's got to roll up her sleeves and start making things happen, start making decisions, and stop uh, sitting behind being afraid to make decisions because it's hurting us. Yeah, I mean, the city of Los Angeles is such a mess right now. And, I mean, I love my city. I, I don't want my city to be looking like this and dealing with this kind of stuff. And I, I'm virtually certain everybody out there listening right now is – an L.A. fan. They're, you're here for a reason, and you love the city, and you don't want to see the city in meltdown. I mean, nobody does. It's interesting. I remember your uh, last survey said the number one reason businesses are staying uh, is the weather, and thank goodness we have Chamber of Commerce uh, weather out there uh, this evening and heading into uh, a yeah. big weekend, the start <laughs> of the uh, the Hollywood Awards season with the Golden Globes uh, coming to Beverly Hills this weekend. So uh, certainly uh, a lot to yeah. uh, celebrate here as well, Mark. And it's wonderful to reconnect with you here as we begin the new year. Looking forward to many more uh, conversations here in, in 2024. And I say, let's do more in 24. Let's absolutely do more in 24. Thank you so much for having me on. And thank you to your team. You guys are amazing. Thanks a million, Mark. Mark Wilbur, former chairman of the Los Angeles Business Federation, LA BizFed, founding member of BizFed, and also former associate dean of the USC Marshall School of Business and longtime president and CEO of Employers Group based here in Los Angeles, Mark Wilbur, live with us here tonight. Motaka Money continues here in 790 KBC. A lot of people ask, what's up? Well, usually the answer is nothing but the rent. Will that continue to be the case in 2024? Let's bring in someone who knows all about this, the latest on apartment rents here in Los Angeles. What is the outlook for 2024? Rents going up or are they coming down? Let's bring in, bring in Michael Lucarelli now, the CEO of Rent Spree, the rental management software provider based here in Los Angeles. Michael, thank you very much. Happy New Year to you and everybody there. Thank you, Frank. Happy New Year. Great to be here. Wonderful to have you with us again. Uh, and uh, give us your outlook here uh, as we start the new year. Uh, of course, we've got a lot of renters listening here to this program. Um, tell us what we need to know. Yeah, so 2024 looks like it's going to be a real big year for rentals in the L.A. area and Southern California. What we're looking at coming up for 2024 is more of a moderate rental price increase of about two to 4% over the course of the year. This is, though still an increase, it's a big difference from some of the annual increases that we saw during the pandemic times, which saw increases of about 12% to 18% during those years. So I think it'll be a good, a good opportunity for people that are looking for housing. You will be able to have at least some relief 
compared to especially the alternative, which uh, affordability for purchasing a home is still pretty much out of reach for a lot of people as well. So rentals seems like they're going to seem be some relief during 2024. It might be another big rental year for SoCal. Right. At this point, uh, given where uh, mortgage rates are, right, and uh, availability, of course, uh, and uh, home prices pretty much uh, at record highs, uh, more people are or have, have to go to uh, rentals to uh, live here in the Los Angeles area. That's correct, Frank. And, yeah, I think the mortgage rates, they saw a little bit of a dip um, for in Q4, but they're still pretty high. I think we're still seeing around 6.5% or so, and that's a far cry from where we were a couple of years ago when you were looking at 25 3 4%. So it's still pretty high up there when you look at the mortgage rates. And um, what's also helpful leading into 2024 is that we saw actually some sizable rent price decreases when you looked at October to November of Q4 2023. So it looks like it'll be a good rental year. All right. Now, coming off uh, the pandemic in the last year or so, uh, did we see that uh, expected avalanche uh, of evictions? Uh, What really happened here uh, in the Los Angeles area? I think, you know, the avalanche didn't tend to be um, as large of an avalanche, maybe um, a a small snowball um, instead of an avalanche. I think um, a lot of the protections did seem to avert uh, some of the larger eviction numbers that we were expecting. But I think still um, it's been some relief that we're seeing across the board that is providing some much needed protection for some of the tenants, while also, I think, keeping in mind that some of these landlords, especially the small landlords, still need to get paid their, their rental prices as well. All right, now this new law kicking in here, right? Uh, no more saving up two months' rent for a, a security deposit here in uh, California. When you move into a place, a new law, state law, limits the amount landlords can charge for a security deposit to just one month. Uh, give us your reaction to that, and, and what is the reaction among the landlords uh, you interact with there? Yeah, I mean, for us, we tend to see both sides of the coin, um, and obviously something like this, there's a huge benefit for rent for renters when you have to pay the first month's rent, plus one, two, even in some cases, more months of security deposit, that's a very large upfront expense. And in some cases, it can almost seem like you're having to make a down payment just to move in here, similar to a down payment that you might make to purchase a home, especially for some of these more expensive apartments. But obviously, the limited ability for landlords to collect and keep this security deposit, it does create a little bit more risk for them. They have Um, a little bit more exposure if they have tenants that cause damage or tenants that they have trouble and need need to end up going into an eviction process. There's just a lot more exposure for them on the board. So it's going to be bad news for them um, across the board, but swinging a little bit more in favor of the tenants in this case. All right. Given uh, what's happened again, uh, coming through the pandemic and now coming out of it, uh, Landlords, uh, we understand, uh, are simply throwing in the towel, especially the mom and pop landlords who weren't able to collect uh, rent uh, because of these various uh, uh, laws that were in place uh, to keep people uh, in their apartments. Um, What is happening uh, in that side of uh, commercial real estate, uh, multifamily uh, housing? And and, uh, are you seeing uh, a lot of change of ownership of these places nowadays? I think that's definitely uh, one of the trends that we're seeing as well you are seeing these small mom and pop landlords. They don't have the clout and maybe the infrastructure that some of these larger property management companies have, and they're not as equipped to deal with some of the risk that comes with managing rental properties. And so when those small landlord, smaller landlords are unable to, to collect rent, unable to maybe go through an eviction process with potentially problematic tenants, like you said, they're throwing in the towel because maybe they can't even cover the mortgage or loan that they have for their property. So that's when you do see really some shift for these larger commercial property managers and uh, large scale landlords that do end up picking up some of these properties, especially in this area. And unfortunately, what that can result in is increased rent prices that drive up more because you end up getting more of these luxury sort of multifamily high rises. So that can have actually potentially adverse impact on some of the tenants when these small mom and pop landlords are driven out. We're on the live with Michael Lucarelli, the CEO of Rentsfree, the rental management software provider based here in Los Angeles, talking about uh, the rental apartment uh, scene here uh, in Los Angeles. And and uh, anecdotally, are you hearing uh, people 
making uh, big payments, uh, back rent payments uh, to their landlords uh, coming out of the, the pandemic? Uh, are people paying those back rents? You know, I think it's hard to kind of get that back. I know even just for myself, I was renting throughout the pandemic and my landlord, I don't, it was also a small mom and pop landlord and he didn't actually try to recoup um, some of the um, losses and rent payment that he got from some of his tenants and he was unable to recoup that back from some of his tenants. So I know that it's been really tricky out there for some of them. And, um, you know, thankfully though, I did have a good situation with him and he was really quite modest with some of the rent increases that we saw throughout that time. So it does make me thankful for some of the housing providers that are out there for myself, anecdotally, as a longtime renter in this area as well. I remember you shared that when uh, your enterprise uh, first started, the, that you're one of us. Uh, you also rent here uh, in Los Angeles. So uh, you uh, go through uh, everything the renters do here uh, in the Los Angeles area. And and uh, what about uh, your, your platform now? I remember when it first started, you were uh, kind enough to come on the air with us here and and it looks like uh, your business has, has only grown. Uh, tell us about uh, Rent Spree and, and what's in it for uh, for renters as well as uh, landlords. Yeah, so I think the most exciting thing for me is that we have, in addition to just doing the tenant screening, like the credit checks, we've also started providing rental payment services. So now you can actually make rental payments through our platform. But n- not only is there a convenience factor there, because you can set up recurring payments and really automate everything, for both the renter and the landlord. But on top of that, we're allowing these on-time rental payments that tenants make to be reported to the credit bureaus at no additional charge, which helps them actually look at their on-time payments and this improves their credit score. So it's a really nice win-win because landlords get paid on time more frequently and renters have the ability to actually harness the power of on-time rental payments to improve their credit score and actually put them in a better financial position. Well, that's great, and, and certainly a great use of, of technology, which uh, is affecting everyone's lives uh, more and more, uh, and including AI, right? Uh, has AI entered um, your world yet? Oh, yes, it has. Yes, it has, Frank. So we actually use AI for um, more of some of the marketing pieces. So, for example, if you're a landlord or an agent and you have a rental vacancy, we do have a nice AI tool that can really help create a nice description for the property and it automates it quite a bit, saves time, increases the quality. And uh, I think it really does a great job at attracting more tenants to, to a property as well. All right. Well, before we let you off the hook here, uh, since uh, you, you have a great handle on uh, what people are paying these days. So give us an update here on the West side of LA, for example, um, what are places going for nowadays? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's expensive there as always, especially on the west side in West L.A. And that's that's where I used to live um, as well. But, I mean, we're seeing just average rents in downtown Santa Monica of about $4,000 for, for, an, for an apartment, which is really, really just a lot for people to, to handle. Um, and this is in contrast to some of the more less expensive areas in, in L.A., more like Inglewood area, it's about 1500 to seventeen hundred dollars per month. There's a really big difference between the West Side and some of the more um, affordable areas, like I mentioned, South LA, Inglewood area. All right. We'll have to look for the bargains out there. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. I uh, wish we had more time, but we'll we'll have to stop there. Look forward to many more uh, conversations here in the 2024. Thank you very much for sharing your great information with us here, Michael Lucarelli, the CEO of Rentspree, the rental management software provider, which happens to be based here in Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Happy New Year to you and everybody there, Michael. Thank you, Frank. Bye. Thank you very much. Stay tuned now for the 790 KBC News Blitz with our legal eagle, Royal Oaks. This is Motec on Money. You're on 790 KBC. The NFL playoffs are almost here, and it all starts with Super Wild Card Weekend, presented by Verizon. Give me everything you got. 12 teams, six games, three days, and one epic weekend that kicks off with a Saturday doubleheader, followed by a Sunday tripleheader, and ends with a wild card Monday. Unbelievable! The road to Super Bowl 58 starts January 13th. 